are watching Wave Watch, California's only surf show. Brought to you by John Bass with Peter Town and hosting the surfers of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Wave Watch, watch it. I'm Peter Tannen and welcome to Wave Watch. We've got a, a, we really got a good show for you tonight. I didn't say great for a change. And uh, we've got some exciting guests tonight. We've uh, got Rick Griffin here and uh, for anybody that's uh, been into surfing, uh, one of the most famous cartoon characters, or the most famous cartoon character in surfing, Murphy. Uh, Rick created that and along with him, uh, Randy Nord, who we've had on the show before. He's a great bass player who was in that old surf band, The Challenges. I'm not trying to date him here, but... <laughs> And uh, also tonight we've got Dennis Jarvis and a couple of his friends from the South Bay and um, from Freeman, <laughs> Freeman McHugh, uh, public relations uh, firm for OP and Tommy Curran, we have Kim Crawford. So we look forward to talking to all them a little bit later. But first off tonight we've got a little bit of surf news. Uh, of course, uh, exciting news, of course, Tom Curran is the world champion and uh, we're going to have a look at an interview of his in a, little, uh, in a few moments. But uh, first off, I'd like to read you the rankings for this year. Uh, quite interesting, uh, Tom Curran, of course, the champion, but in number two, Barton Lynch from Australia. Uh, Tom Carroll from Australia, the defending world champion, finished in number three. Uh, Mark Ocalupo, who ran hot early on in the uh, part, he finished in fourth place. Uh, Australian Glenn Winton in fifth. Uh, Hawaiian Hans Heidemann in sixth place. Uh, seventh place, Mike Burness from South Africa. In eighth place, Martin Potter from England. Uh, ninth, Wes Lane from the USA. Derek Ho from Hawaii in tenth. Uh, Gary Elkerton from Australia in 11th. Sean Thompson from South Africa dropping way back to 12th this year. Uh, Michael Ho in 13th from Hawaii. Uh, new face in the top 16, Dave Palmetto here from California. Shane Horan also dropping way back to 15th. And rounding out the top 16, Charlie Coon from the East Coast. Uh, his first appearance in the top 16, that uh, coveted group. But also in the seating order, which now extends to 32, we had quite a few Americans. Uh, Mike Parsons in 21. Mike Lambrizzi in 22, uh, Brad Gerlach, who won the Stubbies last year in 27, uh, Jimmy Hogan in 28, and Chris Frohoff in 29. So the most uh, Americans in the uh, top 16 and the 32 seating order ever in the history of the sport. So it looks really prime for a great year here in uh, American surfing. We're going to go now to an interview that uh, was just done with Tom Curran uh, since he won the world title, and then we'll be back in the studio with Rick Griffin and Randy Nort. Tommy Kern is champion of the world, better than anybody else at his sport, surfing. You could relate it to uh, maybe mountain climbing, skiing, just the feeling of speed and, and power because you feel the, the surge and the energy of the ocean and you know you get that rush of speed. Kern won the pro championship by accumulating the most points on the 11 month worldwide circuit. And while surfing is a popular sport in Japan, South Africa and Australia, most Americans still see surfing as it was depicted in the movies and commercials during the early 60s, or a way to get some kicks at a California beach party. It was sort of cool to be, uh, you know, into the, the soul surfing and the real mellow sort of thing. And I think nowadays it's seen as a much more competitive thing. More competition means more money. Last year, Curran earned six figures for surfing and more cash through endorsements. But is this as impressive a sports title as, say, Super Bowl champion or the toughest boxer who spends countless hours in a musty gymnasium? After all, this is where a surfer trains. In my sport, I really love it, and it's very fun to do, but it's also a lot of hard work, and I, I really work for it athletically. In addition to the rigors of surfing, Curran keeps in shape by running, swimming, weight training, and yoga. So while he has to be in as good a condition as any basketball player, a surfer is more than zone defenses to worry about. 
sharks, uh, the reef, hitting, getting hit by your own board. Curran is the first American to win the previously Australian-dominated world title, and maybe that will legitimize surfing as more of a sport than a fad in the United States. I know America likes champions, and they like that uh, America has their own, and if that could influence how surfing goes and which direction that will take, um, you know, that would be great. Well, congratulations to Tom Curran, that uh, interview just recorded just uh, only weeks ago. Uh, we're really stoked to have Rick, Gri Rick Griffin in the uh, studio tonight, along with Randy North. Uh, I think Rick might have even coined the phrase stoked. He came up with a lot of great words that uh, surfers use today, and uh, he was instrumental in, uh, in a real development at Surfer Magazine of uh, cartoon comic strips called Murphy's. Um, actually, not Murphy's, Murphy. And, uh, you know, anybody that's been into surfing, of course, has followed the adventures of Murphy. And, of course, all the great surfing movies uh, of the 70s, probably the most famous surfing movie of all time, Five Summer Stories, the posters that you saw on all those telegraph poles, well, Rick Griffin did them. Welcome to the show, Rick. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> Rick, um, how did... I've talked to Randy a little bit, but how did you come to get into surfing art in the very first place? What made you think of something like uh, Murphy? Well, Murphy was based on a character that appeared in the uh, early sagas of the Irish seafarers and uh, he was the son of a mermaid and uh, Murphy actually means sea king and you know you, you begin how did you come to get it into surfer magazine the very first time I remember it was on the cover and that's going back quite some time but did surfer come to you and ask or were you just drawing these things and all of a sudden someone discovered you one day well, I had these uh, adventures mapped out in my high school notebook, and uh, <laughs> John Severson was showing surf fever at our high school, and Randy here uh, took the work in and showed it to John, and then he brought me down and introduced me, and that's how I got started. And from that, you got into surf movie posters, and of course, you did some fantastic other things. Uh, you what, did the original concept for Rolling Stone, one of the most famous magazines on the newsstands today. Well, that's right. I did their original logo. Is it, is it exciting to create a cartoon character based upon surfing? It's tremendously exciting, tremendous. And, and where did those nam names like, you know, Cowabunga and Stoke and things, that, the terms that Murphy used all the way through, where did you come up with such things? Well, Cowabunga was coined from the Howdy Doody show. That was uh, what Buffalo Bob used to say when he used to get excited. <laughs> well, see, that's before my time, because coming from Australia, we never had TV sets in those days. <laughs> Well, that was one of the first shows on TV. <laughs> so, Randy, how did you get to know Rick? I mean, how did you first meet up with him? Well, it was uh, about 1957, and I grew up in Palos Verdes, and we used to serve Haggerty's and Bluff Cove, and there were no uh, high schools or junior highs up there, so they bust us down into uh, sort of the flatlands, and, um, you know, all the different groups of people would hang out at Nutrition, and there was this one fellow with, uh, like, long khaki pants and... French toed shoes and metal flake shirts, and he had to, his hair was real slick. I was a greaser, a hoe dad. <laughs> yes. I mean, but he was like one of the best looking greasers. I'd never seen anything. And I, I got to know him a little bit, and I said to him one day, I said, I said, hey, Rick, will you teach me how to shine shoes like that? Because it was like a secret thing for part of the, the image, and not, nobody in PV knew how to do that. And he, he looked at me and he said, well, what do you do for me? <laughs> and I thought, and I got, well, what can I do? So I said, well, I'll teach you how to surf. And he says, okay. oh, That was a good trade, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> little... So did you teach him how to ride a motorcycle and grease his hair back? That's right. <laughs> We're sniffing gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing today, you know? I mean, a lot of the stuff that uh, relates to surfing, particularly the surf movie posters, you know, surf movies aren't as big a thing today as they were then, although you just did blazing boards. What other things are you doing today? Well, I got a... I got a grass shack on a little island in the Pacific. I got perfect waves rolling through my backyard, and I got it all to myself. <laughs> I'll have to have you over. I, um, when, when can I come? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> That'd be great. And uh, what, what other art projects do you have besides? It looks like a lot of relaxation. Well, let's see. I just, uh, I'm working on an album cover for Quicksilver, Quicksilver Messenger Service. Fantastic. And um, what other albums have you worked on during, uh, through the years? Oh, there's too many, too, too numerous, too numerous to even mention. 
This is a, what a book that uh, was published in the 80s of a lot of your, yeah, back lot of your work. We've, got, we've taken a few shots out of here and uh, some of the stuff. But um, this is quite a fat book. It seems like, uh, how long does it take you to say create a Murphy two-page comic strip? Well, I used to, uh, I actually used to put it off until the last minute. I, <laughs> if, it, if it was due on Monday morning, I'd start it Sunday night. <laughs> no homework that night. Just, I was too busy surfing. I'm too busy surfing to do much artwork, really. And most of the work that you've done is all just uh, freehand, or you you use it. I've noticed that you used airbrush quite a bit too. And a lot of it's done with mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to fake us all out. <laughs> so what's in the future for Rick Griffin? What's he going to What's he going to surprise us with in the in the 80s going into the 90s? Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. May in the meantime, I'll just stick with my waves. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show, Rick. We're You're really welcome. happy to have you. And Randy, thanks for getting Rick in here. You hard. guys go back a long way, eh? Well, 57 to uh, 86. Well, how many years is that? We never finished school. You still though. manage to get out there and catch a few? Does he still get out there and get drag you out there and catch a few? Randy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have a good time. And then you still get him to grease his hair every now and again and play her dad, too? Huh. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, it, thanks for it was a great period in time. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Thanks for having You're us. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. We're going to go and look at some footage right now, and uh, then we'll be back in the studio with Dennis Jarvis and a couple of his little grommet buddies from the South Bay. We're back in the studio with Dennis Jarvis and uh, Doug Weems, that's right Doug? Yeah. <laughs> and Brian Bradfield. And uh, I promised DJ, as he's not affectionately known, that I wouldn't bring Nathan Pratt in the studio. If any of you remember, we had him and Nathan in here when the last time that Dennis was on the show and they really went at each other. But I promised him I wouldn't bring him tonight. Welcome to the show, DJ. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> so what have you been up to since you were on the show last time? Um, working a lot and surfing and trying to take care of the guys from the South Bay area, you know, the young guys. The spider board things, you were just kind of getting into that when you were on the show last time. I mean, that was you, really the beginning of spider boards and... As the new shop, you Right. Mean. Okay, yeah, that's going really well. We're, uh, we're expanding pretty much. We're thinking on opening a second shop, and we're not going to do that now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were going to open in the Palisades and try to get a little bit bigger, but 
Good enough wanted, work as wanted, it is. <laughs> wanted to put a stop to that. Now it got out and just knock it off. So Nathan doesn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, I called you a grommet. You're a bit bigger than a grommet. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the true grommet with the freckles and the, yeah. the brush back hair, you know. <laughs> so where do you guys surf every day? Surf in Manhattan Beach, First Street, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And um, who are the guys that kind of... Uh, you surf with every day beside, of course, the boss here. <laughs> uh, there's always Chris Evans. Chris mm -hmm. Wells is always ripping it up. Uh -huh. You got Mick Barber. He's up and coming. Chance Barber. Chance, Chance Barber, Barber. Too. And yeah. uh, is it a pretty competitive scene for you yeah. guys out there today? There's a lot of competitive guys around the South Bay area. You know, I've gone up to South Bay and tried to catch a few waves. Unless I go out with DJ, I don't get any. Yeah. <laughs> is that still true. like that? That's true. <laughs> there, there is. It is kind of. I mean, every local area is pretty much the got their hot guys and I think the South Bay's crew right now we you know we had Frohoff and Ted and you know I mean all those guys and then Barella and stuff from my era you know way mm -hmm. back when and uh, now you can just see you go out in the water and, and little guys like Doug here that you know I mean he's 13 and he's it's just incredible you know I mean the the amount of of um, ability that they get at such a young age, you know, but I think it's due to shorter surfboards, definitely, you know, everybody's riding a shorter board, doing a lot more wick wax and stuff. Just think what we could have done if we had Exactly, I'm <laughs> pissed off, you know, kind of blows me out. So, um, uh, you were talking to me a little earlier about you trying to get into some, doing some modeling. What's um, no, it was mo it was not modeling, I, I'm just, everybody wants to be an actor of some sort, you know, and I, I'm taking commercial classes. Um, Brian here just got a, a national, or he thinks he got a national, he got the callback, he got the job, he doesn't know if it's national, for um, Blue Cross, is it? Yeah, right? great. And, yeah, so everybody wants to do it, it's just it's a fun thing, I mean, you enjoy your show, and just being in the media of some sort, I mean, everybody's got their ego, I had an ego, I still have an ego, you know, and you just got to pump it, and it's a fun thing, and there's a lot of money in it, so... I mean, I'm not, not trying to whore myself by any means, but I enjoy it, you know, uh -huh. and I'd like to do more. If Brian, I could. what, what d led you in to decide to do, you know, some modeling? Was it just someone discovered you on the beach walking one day, or was it something that you actively pursued? I kind of actively pursued it, you know. It's always been in the back of my head, and I don't know, it's like fun to do. Get out and get in front of the camera, and you have, a, ham. have an agent and all that? Yeah, that, I have an agent. Is it tough going to those calls? I mean, you stand there and what, there's... 20 other guys turn up to There's get like the 50 guys. 50, it's, yeah. it's hard. You gotta just, you gotta be the right person for the right call. It's, you know, it's the timing. It seems that uh, these days there's quite a lot of surfers that are being very successful at it though. You yes. have Buzzy, Buzzy Kerbox who's been very, very successful. Ted just got, as I was speaking to Ted Robinson, he just got a, a Calvin Klein contract where they flew him up to Camarillo or somewhere up north, I forget where, but he just bought himself a new car out of it. But that's that's the modeling aspect. I mean, I want to be more in the vocal side, like um, a team guy that we have, Jeff Parker, mm -hmm. who I, I believe that most of the viewers are going to be familiar with. He works at my shop, and right now he's in Japan. He's making some good money, and he'll be back in a month, and we're going to be going into doing like, you know, I mean, if you go in with somebody, you can actually build yourself bigger than you are. I mean, you get more pumped out of it, you know. But I still surf every day, you know. <laughs> I wanted to bring some footage so you didn't think I was a kook, but I still can surf. Well, we got some great footage of the South Bay, but I don't know if we're going to find you. Maybe yeah. you will shape in that day. That's okay. That's true. So what's happening in the South Bay as far as surfboard design? You know, you're saying, of course, the boards are so much smaller. And is there anything different about the South Bay boards to say anywhere else in California? Um, no, everybody's pretty much pursuing the rusty Merrick style shaping. You know, I mean, it, that's because there's, I mean, Merrick has Tommy, you know, he just, mm -hmm. he's a world champion, so everybody's got to follow the leader to some degree. I mean, y you realize that, and mm -hmm. everybody else does. Um, it's, there, there is no new special thing. Since Simon designed the thruster, yeah, that's it. I mean, right. that is a perfect surfboard. I have a new shaper, his name's Robert Garman, and he was shaping for Jeff McCoy for a while down in Newport. and. Uh, he has some different theories. Everybody has their own theory for summer shapes. You know, I mean, he's bringing the point of entry a little bit back farther than I would. You know, there's all kinds of little different things that you can do, but Still a surfboard is a surfboard. And I mean, uh, that's what I was gonna, I, when I got cut off last time. I mean, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say, is a surfboard is a surfboard, and it stops there. You well, DJ, I mean? you got to say your piece on your own tonight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Th thanks for coming on the show, you guys. We're going to go and look at some footage of the South Bay, and then we'll be back in the studio uh, with the girl from Freeman McHugh.
we were looking at some South Bay barrels there, and when I led into that, uh, I said the girl from Freeman McCoo, well, she might not like being referred, I'm going to embarrass her, she might not like being referred to as a girl, she's a very good looking woman. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show, Kim. Thanks very much, pleasure um, to be here. It must be exciting, and I have a new magazine here that has uh, OP and Tom Curran on the cover. It must be real exciting to work with somebody like uh, Tom Curran and OP. Is it an easy sell? I mean, is it easier to get media coverage about him? Um, it's not, and the big reason for that has been um, there's always been a problem with the media and surfing, and um, because the way the media treats surfing, and that's as a recreational sport, which it's not. It's a professional sport, and um, so that. It's kind of hard to pull the media support in there into um, to getting them to think of it as a professional sport, which it is. You know, of course, it's real easy to get on, say, Surfing Magazine or Surfer Magazine. I mean, that, that's yeah. a natural. Of course, you're going to get great coverage like covers and things. But w what are the, some of the things, the, the angles that the agency is using to try and get Tommy on, you know, national news programs or Sports Illustrated or things like that? Just bombardment with information of what's happening and um, really trying to get them excited about uh, uh, what, t what he's done and his achievements. Um, the fact that he's sponsored by Ocean Pacific um, has a great, great uh, weight on that because the OP Pro, I believe, is a, the most largest televised surf contest. Right. And um, that gets a lot of coverage in itself, and OP promotes it as well. You know, um, he's the first American world champion ever, and uh, mm -hmm. I just can relate to that because I was the first. Australian, I was the first world champion in Australia, mm -hmm. and I had the same problems when I was world champion trying to get in the mass media. Do you think if Tom Curran was to win again, or another American one, or do you think it's going to be easier for surfing to get recogni recognition at a mass media level? Um, I believe that it's going to be difficult, as it has been. Um, the hard fact of it is, is that sponsorship, corporate sponsorship, and coupled with a surfer, say, such as Tom Kearns, with his achievements, is going to um, bring in the uh, media attention that it needs. And uh, the only way to do it for, for, say, an upcoming surfer is to do it by the book, which is what Tom Kern did, um, win the amateur, world amateur, um, turn pro and become a champion, make a name for yourself, and this offers come rolling in from sponsors all over the place. And that's the only way to do it. And you'll get recognized, and therefore surfing will become recognized. What other exciting things uh, has <laughs> Freeman McHugh got in store for, um, for the audience out there with regards to OP and Tom Curran? Well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> um, but I'm sure you're working on some good things. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, is um, the OP Pro as part of the, what you do too? You'll be working with the OP Pro yes, this year? Yes, I believe that's in August. Right. Um, we, help, we help promote it to the media and let them know what's going on. Of course, um, it's had great not fantastic, it has great television, of mm -hmm. course, but um, one of the things that I've noticed through the years, because I was involved in the OP Pro in its first couple of years, but I've noticed that it gets not as great media coverage at the newspaper level as I'm sure OP would like to see. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. I've always seen that it seems to break, the event seems to break the same weekend as the NFL football season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to be a major stumbling block. Is That's there right. any way that you can think that, that that can be overcome? Um, just like I said before, just constant bombardment with um, what's going on and uh, um, contacting the reporters personally and, and telling them what's going on and tr hopefully generating some enthusiasm for it. And um, hopefully they have an interest themselves as maybe they've had uh, surfing experiences themselves. So we pull them into it and get them into it. In general, as the, um, the person that, say, when you get Tom Curran organized with mm -hmm. an interview with somebody from, you know, a mass media newspaper or magazine, are they pretty ignorant to the professional scene? I mean, you were saying that... Um, I believe once you get to a certain point, you have to be professional yourself. Um, an up-and-coming surfer has to have, uh, has to carry himself very, in a professional way. Mm -hmm. He has to be a businessman, and he has to be aware of what goes on in the business world. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't think so. I think at, at the level at which Tom Curran has achieved, when you get to that point, you're aware of what's going on, I think, and um, you have to be. You have to be aware, especially to get the sponsorship that he gets. Well, I wish you a lot of luck with getting uh, Tom Curran and OP some great exposure. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks. You know, while we've been talking to Kim and, uh, and to Dennis Jarvis, uh, Rick Griffin's been out there in the hallway drawing a Wave Watch cartoon of Murphy, and Libby, who came here tonight with Rick, has got this shirt on. It looks fantastic. If you could come on, Libby, we'll show everybody out there. <laughs>
I can't believe that he did this out in the corridor. <laughs> but there's Murphy and we've got Wave Watch and that's, uh, that's truly amazing. Who's got dibs on this? <laughs> anyway, that's been another episode of Wave Watch. Uh, we're glad we could join you. We had some great guests tonight and we'll be back with another great show next week. For me, it's not a it's not a joy ride. We spend the whole year on the road, basically, and we we go contest to contest. There's there's 20 to 30 events uh, a year, and they're all big money. And you know, we want to put on the best performance we can every week. I think people's uh, idea of what surfing is in this country is is a bit distorted, and it's a bit uh, sort of living in the past because you know that's really when it was a, a very popular sort of a fad type of thing with the the Gidget movies and and uh, beach blanket bingo and, and everything like that and uh, even though it still has that sort of innocence and the thrill about it it's, it has changed quite a lot and it's very professional these days.